case with this work. If you look closely, all the series of uh, submission, all the series of images are just separate rooms and you don't see the entirety of the building. When everyone is trying to negotiate each areas and each zones of the of their building, this one separated everything. I remember commenting, providing good feedback on his uh, uh, diagramming, the sun carving exercise of his uh, uh, influencer type of uh, building. Where is that now? Right now, you're just seeing uh, a room with folded elements. But this is too easy. This is like a, a work of a first year student. This is way incomplete. So probably only met the project brief 10%. We can see a lot of work put into this uh, project and you see a lot of uh, facets and folding. And uh, she, she didn't do the typical S profile, uh, but instead, instead you have those inclined walls and then facets. Very interesting interior spaces. But again, I want to see how the floors were all interconnected this is a problem because the moment it is intersecting that way it means that it's not a continuous element uh, it is a notch so it is a cut element already it's a botting that floor surface probably this part is a fail but the rest i think is acceptable because you know when you're looking at uh, this work it's not the x and y folding it happens uh, the folding happens in different directions for this work i'm going to give it 90 percent this image made me worry a little because i thought that this is going to be the same case as uh, the ones that didn't finish the work uh, but later on you will see that it's actually uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, presentation of each floor my only problem is that it's uh, a floor on top of one another you didn't really see the correlationship of the floors and the walls uh, and then uh, the succeeding floors and walls at the bottom and even the one on top so uh, it's it's really confusing but uh, she was attempting uh, to create uh, this very interesting continue continuing envelope all throughout the building that uh, it creates windows it creates a certain type of wall you can see a lot of the concept there but when it comes to the negotiation and using folding as a tool it still need a lot of uh, uh, representation uh, for this one uh, the concept of the project brief is probably at uh, 40 no no 70 percent a really good presentation this is an exploded axonometric but uh, the student is trying to say that these are all connected uh, just that she had to separate each floor um, up close, you can see that the, the project brief was met as uh, the interactive elements are emanating from the floor, from the walls, etc. Try to imagine this is an actual project and then uh, so that you can have a continuous floor that goes down as a wall. Probably you'll have a railing that is glass without the railing, uh, without the, the wooden railing, just so it will still read as an invisible barrier. Uh, but yeah um i think this is doable as an actual problem probably this is an all white model but in an actual in actual project this can be made into two different materials so ex to express uh, the the continuity on the x-axis and the continuity on the y-axis the only negative comment i can provide for this work is that i wish there was an image of the entire building so that we can appreciate it better because we are seeing separated and segmented uh, images. Definitely, this work met the project brief at 95%. It is a shame we didn't see the entirety of the building. Image failed. We don't see the negative space below the bench. Or maybe this is the ground floor. I don't know yet. And now you see the ramp going up. And then again, series of benches with the ramp at the background. Very dynamic. You can see the, the bench emanating from the wall that it turned into a very long bench. It's just a question that under that bench, on the right side, it has a wall. Where did that come from? No, no, no. Actually, I, I, can, I can actually read it. So you have it folding that way, diagonally. Okay. 
okay negative spaces at the flooring it's happening even on the ceiling you can see it so you have all those sweeping benches but this angle doesn't show a void at the floor unless the void is at the ceiling then it becomes acceptable work of the second student the l-shaped bench is actually abutting another wall so uh, this wasn't really a negotiation of the the continuous surface so uh fail and my only problem is really the the negative space or the void that it created but the rest are actually acceptable this is probably one of the works or a few works in the submission that has the exterior envelope uh, being shown so you can see the relationship of the exterior to the interiority of the building so this is very crucial in the introduction of this course because our design tree is all about inter interior architecture or interiority so uh, this is my way to introduce this idea so uh, when we are looking at this uh, uh, submission especially how the student is ending uh, these images uh, we can see the relationship of the uh, the, the floors and the walls uh, with the outside so uh, I can ignore the little details and the, the missed um, parts uh, such as the the failure to reflect the negative spaces where uh, the the benches or probably the seating area are coming from um, so I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it in a macro point of view so I guess this is a good submission so without even coaching him when it comes to the interior furnishings or the details in the scale he was able to translate it intuitively uh, that it has to be this long so that you won't lose the scale and the proportion of uh, of the entire building so there's some consistency and in this uh, regard there's a negotiation space there's interior architecture and there is uh, interactive uh, objects or elements that are still part of the continuing element except for those negative spaces uh, that was supposed to be reflected uh, I, I would say that, that this is almost uh, 90 seven percent this solution actually came too late and now i think i spoke too soon then probably we can say that uh, this is a better submission than the previous one consistently all faceted these are all triangular uh, facets or planar surfaces that turn into a ramp that turn into a wall a floor etc so i'm just going to run through the images so that you can see what i'm saying you can see that the railings sort of slanted on on the sides and then it's still part of the floor and then you have those negative spaces on on the sides that provide you views you can see it turn into a semi wall or semi floor and uh, and then beyond it you can see that the walls are going up and down yes a uh, beautiful work this is uh, the top view these are mostly close-up shots, so it's a shame that uh, we didn't see the entirety of the, the building. 98% because he met the project brief almost consistently um, when you look at the interiors. But the only thing that is missing is the photo of the entire structure. And I'm sure when he shows it, uh, it will still be consistent. In case you're not aware of it yet the previous episodes from episode one up to up to now is actually a continuous exercise and i wanted to do it on a step-by-step -step basis so that uh, the student will get it but uh, as you can see maybe because of their workload maybe because of our pandemic situation very difficult for them to absorb the learning objective or in the program that i'm teaching in we have 14 weeks per term because we have three terms in one year so uh, we are almost halfway of the the term but uh, I feel like we're, we haven't really gone through the, the, the very meat of this, uh, of this class. Okay, this is actually our final submission of exercise one. This is the ending of the project. Uh, we were talking about polar architecture and continuity of material. And with this submission, you will see that uh, a lot of them still don't get it quite yet. Um, 
students that when it comes to design or conceptualization, um, it's very different in practice, it's very different in school. In school, you can play with forms, and, uh, and that's what we're trying to do. Whenever I'm told that uh, I should be teaching what is being practiced outside already, I'm 50% agreeing with that and 50% disagreeing with that. Because uh, if I don't teach the possibilities of design or the potential of what design can do, the students won't see it, the, the students won't push uh, for advancement of design. And I also agree that there are different ways of designing. It's just that in this particular exercise, we are referring to a certain uh, design aspect or a design direction uh, so that uh, the students will get that there's a principle or there's a parameter, there are some rules uh, that they can follow in order to come up with a uh, a very rational design. This is already week six or this is already the sixth exercise and this is when we can see if the student uh, was able to follow through. And if you've been following this vlog, you've been trying to teach them folding architecture continuity of material. It has become a redundant phrase already that probably they're sick of it. I am sick of it but uh, we won't stop unless they, they actually get it. But uh, again, this is the last part of it. While this is just a small task compared to what is expected of them for the entire term. This is just an introduction of what Design 3 is all about, which is all about interior architecture. And I feel like this is the best way that I can teach them that idea. At least for my studio, when it comes to interior architecture or interiority, my, my version of it is that what is outside should also happen in the inside, whether it's in the form of materiality, form, uh, fenestrations, etc. So those uh, formal languages, those elements has to be translated inside. We're not referring to loose elements such as furniture um, because the furniture, you can bring it in any space. Uh, but what we're referring to my version, at least in my studio agenda of uh, architecture interiority, is that it's something that is, exists as a, a whole. It's a homogeneous architecture that even the inside are, insides are designed and well thought of. Like in life, you need to be very consistent at a certain discipline. You need to keep practicing. You need to keep doing it. It's the same thing with design. You need to be very consistent in order to have a clear, honest, and truthful design. It's basically what I want my students to realize and learn. And hopefully we were able to share our process with you. And um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.